moving forward, let's let's take a look at the item list node and learn a few tricks around that. So I am gonna start with sharing my screen. Let's see. Wonderful. I am assuming that you all can see my screen now. So with the item list node, as uh, Max already showed you how it works, I'm going to go through a, a deeper example and going to show you each and every operations in there. So the first example is similar to what Max showed. So in here, I love Pokemon, so I'm just making a API call to the Poke API. If I execute this, I am going to get some information. Uh, OK. Let's see. In the meantime, let me take a quick look at the chat. Right. Let's stop this. Reload it again. Let's try it once again. All right. So as you can see now, we have we are getting a lot of information like the count, the the next endpoint that I should call if I want to get the further information, the previous endpoint for this, and then the result. Now, I am only interested in the result for this. So earlier it was using the function node, but with the item list node, I can specify that I want the results. And if I execute this, it just gives me the result. So the result now contains the name and the URL and it splits them into individual items. So now over here, we have 100 items. And now if I want to process this 100 items, I can uh, add another node, refer to these values, and that particular node is gonna iterate through all these items. So this was a small example around the item list node. The next is what if we want more information from this? So for example, if I execute this particular node, which gives me some information, over here, so we have the JSON information. Uh, sorry, in the JSON object, we get the ID, and we have the fields which contain the actual information. But over here, what I am interested in is get the category of all these particular uh, JSON objects. So the first thing I do is I specify which field I want to split. So it's gonna be the categories because that's an array. So if I execute this, I get the all the categories for each of these individual items. But I have the categories, but I don't know which category belongs to which particular ID or which particular object. And that's where the selected other field or the all other field is helpful. Let's just take a look at what happens when I select all other fields. Now, if I execute this, it includes all the other fields from the previous node as well as it gets us this particular value over here that we have extracted in this node but as winch and i am just interested in getting the id because i want to map that information in the next part of my workflow so i'm going to select selected other fields and over here i have to just specify which field i want uh, maybe let's just do id for now it's going to be a quick uh, if I do ID, now you can see that I have got the JSON ID as well as this. So now I have an object that I want and then I can use it later on in my workflow. So this was the split with uh, split out items operation. Now, oftentimes you may want to aggregate all this information that is coming in, right? We earlier saw that we can split out all this information. But what if we want to aggregate and bundle all this information into a single array? That's where the aggregate without merge option is really useful. So if I now execute this node, we see that we have a category array, which contains again all the categories. Now, because these were all individual arrays, it's now just creating an array of arrays. All right, uh, just taking a look over here at this again. Now, if you have made API calls and if you have taken a look at, you know, how API sends the response back, it's generally not arrays of arrays. It's simply a single array of maybe a string or an object. So to do that, what we can do. 
Now over here, I've enabled the merge list option. So what this will do is this will create a single array of all these options. So now if you're making a call to an API, or if you want to pass on a single array to a particular node, this is how you can do it without writing code. The next one is kind of really interesting because we also have seen a lot of people doing this. You know, they want to sort, uh, sort the information coming in, maybe in an ascending order or descending order, and they are not sure how they can do it using the function uh, function node. And that's where again the item list node is really helpful. Now over here, what I am doing is I am again making a call to the book API, extracting the results. And now I am selecting the short operation. I am shorting this based on the field name. And I want to do an ascending order. So I selected the order ascending. If I want to do descending, I'm going to select descending, execute the node, and now it does shorting for you. So again, it's just trying to help you out with, you know, not getting into the complexity of writing codes and giving you more of a visual cue of how you can do all these operations without code. And the last one is around limiting these outputs. So you get thousands of outputs uh, from a particular node, but in your response, you only want to send maybe 10 of this incoming information. So how can you do that? So again, the earlier was must, you know, write some functions and then uh, limit those incoming values. But now with the item list uh, node, you can limit the number of outputs that you want. So over here, I just want 10 items from the last, right? I just want the last 10 items. That's why I selected keep the last 10 items. If you want the first 10 items, we can select first items. We can even change this. So let's just say we want only five items. We execute this. It returns only just five items. And you can then pass on this information to the next node. Now over here, you can combine all this together. So let's just say we sorted, uh, sorted this uh, into ascending order, and then we want to send the first five. So you can have the sort operation, and then you can connect the uh, item list node with the limit operation. And that's how you can move forward with this. So I hope this kind of helps you understand how item list node can be useful. Now, if you have again any feedback or if you want to, you know, uh, let us know uh, what kind of operations you think should be uh, added in this. You can always uh, share, share it on the community forum and we would be happy to take a look at it and, you know, try to add more operations to the item list node.